Hello, my name is Bianca Schuster. I'm a PhD student at the University of Birmingham. And today I'm presenting my poster entitled Effects of the Dopamine D2 Receptor Antagonist Haloperidol on Mentalizing Performance in Healthy Adults. Parkinson's disease is primarily classified as a movement disorder with symptoms affecting motor functions such as tremor, movement rigidity or overall slowness of movement. However, there is a growing body of work reporting deficits in Parkinson's patients and tasks measuring theory of mind. In Parkinson's, we know the origin of the motor symptoms very well, which is the degeneration of dopamine-producing neurons in the substantia nigra, a small structure within the basal ganglia. And there are two ways in which the low brain dopamine levels seen in Parkinson's can affect social cognitive function. On one hand, dopamine loss could affect social cognition directly through an under-concentration of dopamine in the prefrontal areas recruited in tasks of theory of mind. Alternatively, social cognition could be affected indirectly via affecting motor simulation processes necessary for the accurate decoding of stimuli. We use the dopamine antagonist haloperidol to explore these potential pathways in a healthy adult sample. For this, our participants came in on two separate days and took 2.5 mg haloperidol on one and placebo on another day. Haloperidol was a classical antipsychotic and lower brain dopamine levels for occupying D2 dopamine receptor. Approximately four hours later, our participants completed our adaptation of the Frith Hape animations, a task that has been widely used to test mentalizing performance in clinical conditions and healthy people. In this task, participants are required to attribute mental states and intentions to short stories of interacting triangles. Our participants first created their own animations of two mental state and two non-mental state words by moving two triangles around a touchscreen device. And they then viewed a range of animations for these same words which have been created by other participants. We also measured participants' baseline working memory performance which in the literature has been established as a reliable indicator of individual striatal baseline dopamine levels, and we measured motor performance in a drawing and a walking task. We expected participants with low working memory and hence low baseline dopamine levels to have a higher susceptibility to dopaminergic manipulation and therefore show greater drug effects. What we found in our main task was that participants became less accurate at labelling the correct animation in both mental state and non-mental state conditions when they had taken the drug. And this effect was independent of baseline working memory scores. We also found that haloperidol slowed down movement speed in our two motor tasks. And in these two tasks, we did indeed find the expected interaction between drug effects and working memory score, in that only participants with low baseline working memory showed a slowing down as a response to taking the drug. In addition, drug effects on movement speed were not at all related to drug effects in mental state attribution accuracy. We suspect that our results show that there were different dopaminergic pathways involved in the drug effects we observed in our mentalizing task and in our two motor tasks. Because we did not see the interaction with working memory expected for tasks recruiting striatal dopamine in our main task, we conclude that dopamine affected performance here independently of motor performance, presumably via the mesocortical pathway. Ultimately, we think our data indicates that dopamine directly modulates mentalizing ability in this animations task and provides some evidence for why Parkinson's patients and other clinical conditions where dopamine is compromised show atypical performance in this and other mentalizing tasks.